Are you thinking about going into cybersecurity? If so, I don't blame you. It is a great career opportunity, but I'm going to share three things that you need to know before you make that jump. I'm telling you, do not go into cybersecurity without knowing these three things. Stay tuned for this video. Let's go. Hey, cyber heroes, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Boyd Clues, an internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, and I help people upgrade their jobs into a six figure tech career. And if you want to follow me on this journey, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to take your career to six figures and beyond. OK, guys, I am super excited about this video right here to share some insight that I've learned over the past 12 years the hard way. I'm going to give it to you. These three principles are going to transform your life and your career. So number one, you need to understand the function of cybersecurity and how your role actually fits in it. All right. So most people think that cybersecurity is about hacking and coding and that. No, 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 no. Let's be clear about this. When a company hires you, it costs them money and taxes, which means less profit. Your function in your role is to help the company protect their assets, their reputation, so that they can conduct business safely and securely to keep making money. That is the only reason why I exist. And so I found this out when I was working first as an IT analyst at a software company, and I made the transition to become a security analyst because of a business need. The company didn't have anyone that specialized in a specific cybersecurity framework that I was working on on that if the company failed, they were going to get fined millions of dollars and lose the ability to process credit card payments. So I was actually put in that position because of a business need. You got to understand companies are not going to pay you a lot of money just because, right? You have to understand that the position that you're in is to assist the business in achieving its goals, which businesses only exist for profit, especially if it's a publicly traded company. The role of the business is to increase the wealth of the shareholders. Your position is going to help them accomplish that goal. And if it doesn't, you may find yourself being surplus or laid off. So it's important to understand how that business operates and where your specific role helps the company achieve that objective. So what you really need to do is take inventory of your job right now and see if you can align with what, what you do, how it helps the business make money or protects the business from losing money. And if you can't answer those questions, you need to do some more digging because your job could potentially become in jeopardy if the company goes through tough times. Okay, guys, so let's jump into number two, which number two builds upon number one. And this is understand the business. You need to understand the business. So first of all, we need to realize what the function is. And after we realize the function, we need to understand the type of business that our company is in. And let me give you an example. When I was working as the senior security architect for American Airlines, I understood the business that we're in, customer service and travel. And most of the revenue for the company actually came via online payments via aa.com and some other websites right and so what my job was to do was to perform security review of any systems or applications or processes that involve credit card data that was my role and i absolutely loved it but i wouldn't have been in the position to actually advise and do the right things had i not done the wrong things when i was working at the software company earlier in my career what i would do is i would have these meetings as a security analyst the developers project managers business executives whatnot they would come to me the security team with different initiatives that they wanted to do and to me I deemed it as insecure and I shut it down. I would not pass the risk review so they couldn't implement it. But that was wrong. It actually created conflict in the company because instead of people coming to me to show me their ideas so that I could review them or approve them, they started going around me and just doing it anyway because they knew that I would shut it down. And then eventually it created more work because then we had to go do what's called remediation, which means you have to fix what's broken. Now, fast forward back to American Airlines years later, when I'm a more mature security professional, I realized that my job was not to tell the business no, 
it was to tell the business, yes, but how can we do this in a secure fashion? That was my job. It was business enablement. If you find yourself as a tech professional always saying no, people are gonna go around you and they're not going to like you. Your career, growth, and everything is gonna be contingent and dependent upon the relationships that you build. And you don't wanna burn bridges by being that guy that's always saying no. That's what you need to realize. You can't figure that out unless you understand your role and then understand the business. That helped me so much in my career and I hope that you take that to heart. Okay guys, this is a great time for you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I hope that you're getting massive value from these simple concepts that are so profound. Let's jump into three. Number three is you need to understand, hear me now, understand the different niches in cybersecurity. Hollywood and all these colleges and boot camps will have you thinking that you have to have a college degree, a certification, you need to code, you need to know Python scripting, you need to be able to hack. That is not the case, guys. There are so many niches in cybersecurity that don't require any technical background at all, such as a business analyst, a QA, which is quality assurance, an IT auditor. These roles exist in part of something that's called GRC, which is governance, risk, and compliance. You have to think about it like this. So when an IT professional or a cybersecurity professional does their work, somebody has to validate that the work has been done, number one, correctly, and two, specification, whether that's an internal policy or an external regulation like the PCI DSS or NIST, some type of regulation. So there's this thing that's called separation of duties, which means that I can't audit my own work. It doesn't make sense. Who would call me out if something was wrong? I wouldn't call myself out, would you? This is why IT auditors exist, business analysts exist, QA people exist. They don't need to have the coding and technical background, but what they do need to have, now take this down because these are skills you want to develop, the ability to read vendor documentation to audit a system. For example, if I was auditing a Red Hat Linux system, I would go over to the Red Hat Linux website. I would figure out what version I need to audit. I would download the system administration guide, and let's say that I need to look at the password settings. I would look at that guide and see exactly how do I navigate to the password settings to be able to verify it has the right setting. But the cool thing about working in this GRC space is you don't have the ability to access that system. So that system owner is gonna to have to walk you through that system. You're gonna look over their shoulder while they click through the different prompts, but you just wanna be knowledgeable enough to recognize whether the value is there or not. For example, if the password policy was said that a password needed to be at least 15 characters, you need to be knowledgeable enough to, what, to know whether or not it is at least 15 characters so they can't pull the okie doke on you. And you find this out by just simply reviewing the vendor documentation, not by going to become a system administrator. That is not the gig. It's not the gig at all. So I'm telling you, you. you can make great money in cybersecurity without all these technical must-haves just by being in the GRC space. So those are some great career opportunities for you to look in if you are looking to make this pivot into cybersecurity and you're not interested in becoming a coder or a hacker or anything like that. Because I can tell you, I know I was not. Hey guys, which was your favorite key here in this video? Let me know down in the comments. I'm curious to get your perspective. If you'd like to learn the business skills, the mindset, the non-technical skills to take your career to six figures beyond in tech through cybersecurity, I invite you to apply to the Baxter Clues Training Academy. You can go to www.boydclues.com forward slash GRC and apply to join the academy where we've helped more than 700 people just like you upgrade their jobs into a six-figure tech career without needing any certifications, college degrees, or anything like that. It's what we do. Hey, remember guys, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to help you take your career to six figures and beyond. And that's it guys, I'll see you on the next one.